for the second year, the KBiz Disruptor Series was concepted to identify both people and brands who are truly disrupting and forging their way through a complicated landscape with new ideas and actions. This year, we have three disruptors who are incredibly impressive with their accomplishments and vision. We have one today in the technology track, and then two tomorrow in both wellness and sustainability tracks. This year, our technology track is sponsored by MTech. So let's watch this great video from the people at MTech. Thoughtful design is in MTech's DNA. Inspired by art, architecture, and the world around us, we balance feel and function to create something you'll love to touch every time. MTech Select provides a new level of customization for doors and cabinets. And this year, we're adding a variety of styles and textures to help you mix and match even more. Our new straight knurled designs evoke trends in faucetry and lighting. And we're taking inspiration from kitchen and bath to craft distinctive knobs and levers out of beautiful white marble. Thoughtful design also extends to the way we work. We build to order right here in LA with fast, predictable lead times, so you can personalize every detail and still keep your project on track. From sampling to ordering, our goal is to make customization as easy as off the shelf. So when someone wants something really special, dealers can get it in a fraction of the time. At the end of the day, it's your project, your vision. You shouldn't have to compromise. No matter your style, there's an M-Tech product for you. M-Tech, make it personal. Now that you've heard about M-Tech's commitment to technology, I have the great honor of introducing our speaker for the Disruptor Series in the technology track. Over the next half hour, you, have, you will meet Alexi Dubov, I was talking to the stage producer in backstage and she told me that she learned about Alexi when she was looking for a speaker in the sustainability track. Makes sense because Alexi is a co-founder and chief innovation officer for Mighty Buildings, a company whose mission is to help solve the housing climate crises by transforming the way the world builds homes and their commitment is to make carbon neutral housing a reality for everyone. That's a big deal. But this is a company who's making their sustainability story come to life with technology, 3D printing, robotics, material science, and now AI. If technology makes you nervous, learn from Alexi, who's paving the way for the housing industry to make change through leading edge technology. Get ready to be inspired and learn from this young gentleman who has not only never shied away from technology, but has embraced the tech beast in so many ways. <laughs> Welcome Alexi Dubov to the stage. A beast, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you. Got it. <laughs> okay, here are the beast. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Alexi. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, it's funny actually, when, when they asked me to put the slides together, me as a kind of like repeated founder, I put like I think like 80 slides about my company uh, and another like five slides about another company that I'm doing right now. And uh, then I jump on a call, review the slides and they say like, no, 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 we would like to know about you. So it's very weird for me to present me as a person and tell like, you know, you'll see not only one slide about me, but more than that. But, you know, here's the story. Um, that's me 2009. Uh, graduating from um, university. I was presenting my work uh, and uh, one of the fact that I already started two companies back then uh, and sold one uh, back in university. And the thing is that since then, I mean, my track records I started, I'm six times founder, two exits, uh, meaning so selling the companies. Uh, I invested in more than 10 companies uh, with a portfolio of uh, kind of, you know, a number of patents and innovations. Um, contributor volunteer to the brand that you're familiar with, likely HTM, ISO, if you ever went through a certification and so on. So I'm actively contributing to that. Uh, and on top of that, um, you know, this is, you know, my education. So by training, I have an engineering degree in robotics and complex automation. That's probably why technology is not, you know, that scary to me. 
Um, but you know, my kind of like you know, footprint is global. So these are the brands that I started uh, throughout the years. I started, you know, originally I'm from Moscow, Russia. Then I moved to Germany, started another two companies, then moved to Singapore, another two companies, and then to the US, and again, another two companies. So you see like you know, two companies in each and every country. Um, I will point out, you see more than six here, right? But I don't call you know, founder for the company that are providing just services. It's more about the ideas. But I think like, you know, going through this learning is very important because in this case, I learned how to assemble the teams, communicate them, and so on. So I'll point out to a few that are most relevant to this crowd, I believe. Um, so the first one, this, this uh, idea came to me in 2011. And the story behind that was uh, that, we're, you know, remember, was LED lighting was just introduced to the industry, right? So it was back then. So I asked my engineers to order LED lights, light bulbs from China. They brought to me the kind of like, you know, different options of that. And I remember like I was working like long hours, 20 years, something old. And I started like experience headaches. And yet I barely like, you know, have headaches in my life, honestly speaking. So I, then I decided to explore like, you know, why, what's going on? So um, I start checking you know, some papers and research, and it turns out that the dynamic light and the quality of light influence our health. So that's how I came to the idea in terms of like, oh, well, maybe there should be a solution that will be accessible to our, you know, to a customer. So that's how we created Svet. Svet is a health-friendly lighting with the idea in terms of like mimicking the dynamic light throughout the day. Uh, from you know when you wake up and when you go to sleep. I did this research together with Fraunhofer Institute in Germany, and we actually unveiled this product in 2016 at CES in Las Vegas. So you know, in terms of how ideas came to mind, uh, that's one of it's, it's really you go through certain experiences. Another one is um, this company I confounded with my friend, and again. When I think about the interior space, so some you know, space where people go in, typically they already have the behavior of, for instance, if they have a wall clock, right, you all have a behavior of glancing and reading this information. So that's very important whenever like, we design any space uh, to think about how people behave and how technology can actually embrace it rather than like, you know, change their behavior because changing behavior is very hard. So we, what we call it like enchanting technology it's sort of like, you know, you already have this behavior, but we can provide additional value. So for this product, we sold, I think, thousands of units. We shipped to customers, and this company was acquired by a clock manufacturer in the Netherlands. And then what I call mighty beginning. Uh, 2017, uh, one of the ideas that uh, came, I remember this conversation happened in Singapore in a bar, you know, as I all, most of the startups came, you know, to the mines. And um, one of my co-founders uh, for Mighty Buildings, uh, he was, his previous company was in 3D printing. And he's an expert in material science, and he was thinking and dreaming about like, what we can do if we're gonna have the larger 3D printer in the world. So, and we keep brainstorming and start about different applications. And uh, one of the applications became like, you know, very convenient to us was construction, you know? Maybe commercial use cases, roads, or like, you know, whatever. Uh, but the thing is like how it started, like it started like this. If you think about this 3D printer, it's small, it's really tiny, right? And uh, that was the beginning of 2017 with the idea, what if we're gonna have the world larger 3D printer, but we have this formal of the material. And I think it's cool, right? So it's material really frail, frozen in the air. I remember like you know, on some conference when I show it, like people like, oh wait, show it again, like what, <laughs> how it's happening. Um, so since then, uh, and I mean, the gentleman get, did a great presentation, very complex in terms of what we're building right now. Uh, but in general, you know, that's us, uh, the initial team. Dimitri is uh, the guy who initially was thinking about the world largest 3D printer in the world. Uh, that's me in the center. Um, so this idea got backed by a number of uh, venture capital firms, right? So, and again, we presented the idea in terms of like how we can resolve certain problems but we didn't know how, right? I'm not coming from the construction industry. Previously, you saw the previous companies like Intrum Electronics, like Robotics, uh, uh, and software. Uh, but I was curious in terms of like, why not? Let's, let's try, let's learn. Um, 
so since then, uh, we started with accessory dwelling units. Uh, with accessory dwelling units, we took the whole control of the design. My approach typically was to let's hire the best inter like designers and architects and give them the tool uh, to build with our material, right? To kind of like you know unleash the freedom and you know the beast. And in uh, <laughs> right now, it sounds like you know funny and interesting, but back then when we had just this small printer, it wasn't that convenient for a lot of designers and architects in terms of like you know yeah you can print something with this material, uh, but it takes like you know a lot of kind of like passion to communicate this and. Uh, as you see, right, we delivered more than 30 uh, units like this with the 3D printed walls inside that was the first iteration. Uh, since then, we already brought uh, three generations of materials, of construction material to the industry. Uh, we certified three building systems. And the company is only six years old. Um, and that's, uh, you know, we also delivered the first net zero community in Desert Hot Springs that is 3D printed. By the way, whenever you're in Desert Hot Springs and plan to spend some time there or Palm Springs, just let me know. I'll be happy to arrange a tour with the developer who did this. Um, and uh, again, by the way, this, this design was completed by architects, EYRC architects, that are one of the top single family home designers in, uh, in the world, I think. Uh, they're based in Los Angeles. Um, and it's kind of, you know, I like it, it's beautiful. One thing about our material, it's an alternative to any material that, ha like, you know, that exists in the market. And it's very lazy transmitting heat and cold, uh, so ma making it very energy efficient. So for instance, in a desert area during the summertime, inside it was very comfortable to be there without HVAC to, to run like crazy all the time. Um, and our footprint, so, so right now we delivered more than 60 units, not only in California, also in, Texas, in, uh, in Florida, we're about to deliver in Texas, uh, in uh, Oregon, we delivered one in Illinois, and we are about to assemble one in Dubai. We have two factories right now, one in Oakland, California, another one in Monterrey, Mexico. Monterrey, Mexico, obviously for cost reasons. Uh, and uh, we have highly deployable, kind of like, you know, model. So, you know, what started was sort of like a small printer material formula and uh, the idea of kind of like what we can do with the world's largest 3D printer became a very complex system that right now can deliver sustainable homes across the globe at scale and resolving kind of like, you know, the, a lot of issues uh, in the industry. And, uh, you know, by building this, I sort of was exposed to all the problems starting from a design, off-site manufacturing, supply chain, procurement, um, assembly construction, and even kind of like even it to the customer. So I actually was witnessing all everything related to kind of like mixing the raw materials to make something tangible to the point here, here's your key from the, your house, right? And engaging everyone in, in between. So at a certain point, I thought about like, oh, okay, so there's so many problems and I will not be able to resolve them within my two buildings. So I thought thinking, Maybe I need to set up something to create ecosystem that will help me to kind of like, you know, attack these problems in the future. So that's how I came to the idea to create BuildTech. BuildTech is my venture. So that's how we invest in the early stage uh, companies. Um, and that's kind of like the idea in terms of like embracing new technology, right? So one way of embracing new technology is kind of like, okay, let's attack the problem. Let's create something new. Another way of embracing new technology is thinking, Okay, I have a lot of problems, a lot of inefficiencies, and probably I can resolve them. Let's try new things. Yes, there is a risk involved, there is a, but on the other hand, there is a huge reward, right? If we can accelerate, if we can deliver better results to the customer, we will be better and we will serve better to these customers. We'll get more customers. So that's how BuildTech was created as an ecosystem. Um, I mean, the thesis is kind of like synergy between innovation and investment, and uh, I first started as a syndicate. And again, it was an idea. I was trying to resolve my problems within my two buildings, was with the outlook of two years. Investing early on in the companies and then approaching them uh, two years later, saying like, okay, I, my two buildings will be ready to become a customer. Um, so rather than kind of like, you know, double clicking on the investment thesis, uh, I will rather kind of like, you know, show you some of the case studies. So number one, bundle. By the way, the company is here. Um, how many of you are familiar with procurement, sourcing, and et cetera, right? And who are you running it on spreadsheets? 
if any, okay. <laughs> so this company can resolve this problem. And look, it's not advertising. Like, the first time I learned about this company was from one of my investors. So they approached me saying like, hey, if this is a company, very interesting to me, let me know what you think. I literally like reviewed their presentation and I thought like, eh, I don't know. And I sent it to my supply chain team and procurement team. Half a year later, I was passing by one of the desks of my employees and I saw the invoice with this logo in the corner and I asked, hey, wh what is this? And they said like, you forwarded us this company half a year ago, we evaluated them, we became a customer. So my company, Mighty Buildings, became a customer to them. <laughs> Obviously in a few months I approached founders of Bundle and say like, hey, I want to invest. <laughs> so that's kind of like you know, how I start building. And we still, we are still a customer of Bundle. They are, they are great. They kind of like run our procurement sourcing, even sourcing for, uh, in, in Mexico for our local operations. Um, another one is Ina. Ina is, uh, by the way, I think they also here, but at uh, IBS. Uh, so if you run some renovation or proposal for the customer, my suggestion is to run it the same scope and project by them, just to compare. Like, what, where is the, the difference between like you know early stage company that kind of like refining the workflow to make it more efficient compared to. Uh, to what you're offering, because these guys can actually can kind of like, you know, do faster turnaround for any project. Another one is permit flow. I mean, we all know permits are kind of like you know painful. Um, so these people, um, and if, for instance, how how we invested in permit flow. Permit flow was um, we, my company at Mighty Bills, We went through Y Combinator, which is a, like acceleration program for the startups. These guys also went through um, Accelerator. And when I met the founder, I thought like, oh, okay, they will probably figure it out by in, in, in two years, and they literally, literally did it. So if you're facing anyone like you know in a metropolitan, uh, in the big areas uh, like you know San Francisco and other cities, by the way, they are right now expanding outside of like you know these areas they can accelerate and take the permitting process for you and reduce the amount of mistakes done by to ze almost to zero. So meaning that there's like a high chance of getting these permits done within like you know, 60 days time, time frame we speak about California. I don't know about other states, but you know. Um, another one is uh, RainStick. Um, and uh, RainStick, for instance, we've done this investment in December and uh, I think I met them last year at IBS. So the founder reached out to me. I said, like, oh, okay, that's probably a very interesting system. And um, again, the company is, if you think about it, like what you can offer to your customers, kind of like you know, the shower system that will reduce the amount of water being used by 80%. Very easy to install. By the way, my meeting with them at IBS was very funny. I approached them and I saw the design, and I said, like, no, architects are never going to use it like you know in any design because they have only one option i said well, you need to bring like embedded like behind the wall system that's going to be easy to install half a year later they asked me to meet me in, in, in my office in auckland and they presented this system then like you know again a few months later i decided to kind of like, okay we need to invest in this company and it's a huge potential for instance uh, for instance uh, i think we were already delayed to implement it in desert hot springs but desert hot springs with uh, all like you know water uh, regulation and so on. Uh, this is system like that will be very beneficial. And the return of investment is just, um, I think, like you know, year or like year and a half. Um, speaking about AI, I mean, I I honestly lost track of my teams at Mighty Buildings using AI in different like you know workflow um, pieces. And by the way, how many of you experimented with AI in in your work related stuff? Raise your hands. Awesome. Awesome. What about the rest? <laughs> no? <laughs> no, the thing is, is kind of like you don't need to refine the, the whole like, you know, processes, right? It's, it's more about like, you know, picking some small, like start experimenting. It's more about the learning process, right? If, and uh, there is no perfect tool to resolve some, or like, you know, change the way um, some proposals down to the customer, but the small pieces can be improved, right? And it's more for the business owner, for the principal, or like for your firm to just, you know, improve and make it faster. And that's competitive edge, right? I remember my conversation with one of the uh, executives in Thront and Tessimati, uh was about like, you know, how you embrace an AI. And he's like, you know, in a few years, 
his plan is to fire about 60% uh, of his designers and architects. <laughs> I'm like, really? Like, no. He said, like, but then he corrected. He said, like, not to fire, but to replace them, because those who are not experimenting and embracing the AI will be probably, like, you know, lagging in terms of their performance and offering to customers. So, you know, this is uh, another set of tools that you can literally start, you know, doing experiments right now. They're not doing like you know very drastic change in your workflow, but you know just start try it. Like you define like a small piece within your workflow that probably can be improved. And there is a tool of the company that's already doing it, and then find out like you know if the customer wants this in a, another iteration of design or the life iterations with the design. Or another thing is just to reduce the amount of mistakes typically done in the drawings. Right? We all have like these layers of you know, principal, senior designer, and uh, in interns, and kind of like, you know, the work is typically pushed down, right? Then it's kind of like corrected to the uh, degree. So to, to avoid these mistakes being like, you know, cascaded, it's very easy to use AI just to catch it very early. Um, where are we on time? I think we're good. And yeah, my last note, I mean, the whole theme that's um, kind of like, you know, throughout this presentation, there are two ways to embrace technology. One, all in, kind of like change it, similar to mighty buildings. Mighty buildings is like reshaping what we do, right? It's kind of like different type of material, never done in the industry. We actually introduced the, the new category for the world uh, classification of the building products, right? So it's heavy lifting, I would say. Like it took us two years, literally. Like, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of like, you know, hope and pray, but it's done. <laughs> Yeah, but on the other hand, like as I said, another approach is just time proving small within the workflow. Show to your team and to, to your employees that they can experiment, right? And they just, you know, let's try to improve. Um, and again, there's some risk associated with that, but on the other hand, the reward is way higher uh, and more beneficial because it's competitive edge, right? The customers are going to be happier. The quote will be provided like you know faster, and again in some cases it's going to be 80% accurate, like an accurate, right, or 80, 90% accurate. But on the other hand, like you know we're all professionals, so we can bridge this gap in terms of 10%, at least for now, right, until the the AI will bring us to the next level. Um, and look, why this photo is here? I like to cook, but I like to cook, and I never ever repeat this the uh, recipe. Over again, I always do the experiments. All my friends know that whenever I cook, they will taste something new. And the one thing that I'm gonna do at the end of like cooking, I'm gonna burn the recipe that I wrote. This is like you know ceremony for me. But the thing is, it's like you know that's how I learn in terms of like what's you know can, can and I, I develop the like kind of like the gut feel in terms of like what's gonna work and what's not gonna work and where, where people are excited or not. The same like the same approach I have for work-related stuff, right? In terms of like, my team is presenting to me, let's improve this piece by using this tool. And I'm like, ah, you know, there's a number of dependencies. I don't feel like it's gonna work, right? So as the sooner we do experiments, the better uh, for the business and uh, the more scalable it's gonna be. So, questions? And if you have questions, like wait for the microphone to come to you. Okay, thank you very much.